This is my Reddit bot, MJ Prompt Bot. It lives on the Google Cloud and monitors the MidJourney subreddit 24 seven for free. If you're curious how to make a Reddit bot, even though your coding skills are rusty or non-existent, then keep watching because my name is Michael and I figured out how to use Bing Chat to create my first Reddit bot. So I used a bot to make a bot. Actually, I used a bot to make a bot to help people use another bot. Let me jump right in and I'll explain everything as I go along, I promise. Bing is the AI chatbot I prefer for coding. I use it over the more famous ChatGPT because Bing is also free, but doesn't require a phone number and currently has more capabilities than ChatGPT. You need to have a Microsoft account and use the Edge browser for Bing Chat. There are ways to get it working on other browsers, but I was fine with Edge. I started by asking Bing, can Bing code in Python? Bing responded, yes. So I asked if it could generate Python code for a Reddit bot. Bing said sure, and then talked about PRAW. Turns out PRAW is an acronym for the Python Reddit API wrapper, which you need to code a Reddit bot in Python. I didn't know about PRAW, but Bing did. Thank you, Bing. Bing also gave me sample code for a simple hello world response bot. Cute. At the end, it mentioned that my bot could be deployed for free on a cloud platform like Heroku to make it run continuously. This was wrong, but we'll get to that in another video. So now that Bing and I are vibing, I hit it with the bot I want to make. I ask, can you code a Reddit bot in Python that will find any comment in the MidJourney subreddit that contains the phrase imagine and was made by the user that submitted the post and then cross post that post as a new post in the MJ prompt bot subreddit and post a comment to that new post that is a copy of the found comment. What? Let me explain. Midjourney is a text to image AI that generates really cool images based on text prompts. You communicate your prompts to Midjourney through a Discord bot. Prompts are also how I talk to the Bing chat bot. Prompt engineering is an art and a science. And for image generating AIs, it's a lot of trial and error. Given you only have a finite amount of processing time with Midjourney, a good way to get better at crafting prompts is by looking at other people's prompts and the images those prompts created. Then you copy the bits of the prompts from the images you like and build from there. A popular place to share Midjourney pics is the Midjourney subreddit on Reddit, but very few posters include their prompts. People often complain about this on the subreddit. That's where my bot can help. My bot scans the Midjourney subreddit and when it finds a post with a prompt, it cross posts it to a subreddit I created called MJ prompt bot. It's the same name as my bot. Before you can run your code, you'll need to get your bots credentials from Reddit. Bing lists out the steps here, and I'll run through them in the video so you can slow it down and pause to see the details. By the way, don't worry if your Reddit looks different from mine. I'm using old Reddit with some plugins, but I checked the current version and it's exactly the same process. You might want to create a new Reddit account to run your bot. I created MFIO bot as my Reddit account for my bot, so if something went horribly wrong, it wouldn't mess up my main Reddit account. You should also read the developer terms and API terms. There'll be links to the pages you'll see here. When you click the Create app at the bottom of the page, it gives you your bot's credentials. Below that, you can see the same Create application form you just completed with some of the fields already filled in. You can ignore that. It's just there in case you want to make a bunch of the same bot. For our purposes, we just need the one bot, and now we have what we need, its credentials. But when you scroll down, you'll see there's a link that says, you must also register to use the API. API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it allows your Python program to interact with the Reddit website, similar to the way you use the Reddit app or the Reddit browser to interact with Reddit. To be honest, I'm not sure that the API registration is required because you already have your bot's credentials before registering, but I just didn't want to risk my bot not working due to technicality, so I went through the whole process. You'll put the credentials from the page where you created the bot, plus your Reddit account username and password for the one controlling your bot, into your code to create an authorized Reddit instance. This allows the bot to search and post on Reddit the same way you enter your Reddit username and password before you can post or do things on Reddit. These need to be private. I'm showing mine here so you can see what they look like and where they go, but I deleted these afterwards and redid the whole process off camera to get my bot's real credentials, the ones I'm using now. So the code you see later on in this video will just be using credential placeholders. I had one more step before I jump back into coding. Because I created the MJ prompt bot subreddit with my main Reddit account and also made it private, I had to add my bot as a user of that subreddit so it could post there. I'll make the subreddit public once the bot is fully operational. Back to coding. Bing responded to my prompt with some code. I copy and paste that code into Notepad or directly into a PY file. 
That's also where I make any changes to the code that Bing suggests later. I run the code on my PC, and in a later video, I'll show how I upload the PY file to the cloud so it can run 24 seven on a virtual machine. So to code your bot with Bing, you'll need to install Python on your computer. I've seen Reddit bots in action, but I didn't know how they actually searched Reddit. So I asked Bing and found out my bot was coded to search new posts as they are made. That might be fine when the bot is up and running perfectly, but for testing, it meant I would need to wait for new posts that had prompts in order to know if my code was working. I hate waiting. Me too, Inigo. So I revised the code to search a date range. Then I ran the code for the first time. I actually thought it would work, so I recorded myself. Here it is. Okay. And nothing happened. Okay. All right, let's try to figure it out. Pro tip, run your code from the Python editor instead of just running the pi file so you can actually see the error messages in the Python shell. Now that you can see the error messages, you can copy them and paste them into Bing to debug your code. Sometimes I say, here's an error I received and I paste it in. And other times I just copy it into the chat and Bing realizes what I'm asking, especially when we're already discussing the code. My first error was having a quotation mark in the bot's username, which messed up the credentials. My second error was that I didn't install PRA. It took me a while to realize that it needs to be installed from the Windows command line, not the Python editor. Bing helped me with that. But even after fixing my newbie mistakes, the code still produced an error. So I plugged the error into Bing, and it told me the search method in my code was depreciated and would be removed in the next version. That was annoying because I don't want to have to change the code when PRA is updated, but I expect the issue was caused by using the creative style. Bing Chat has three styles. The creative mode generates longer, more imaginative answers, while the precise mode focuses on shorter, factual answers. The balance mode aims to provide a balance between the two styles. These styles are very important. I started using the creative style to write my code, but later learned if you're going to write code, precise style is the way to go. You can tell which style you're using based on the color, purple, blue, or green. After a few iterations, my code ran without errors, but didn't cross post anything. Oddly, I could not figure out if the date range was correct. Bing and the internet gave me conflicting answers. It's possible I was checking dates in the future that didn't have posts yet, or posts too far in the past. So I had Bing revise the code to post in my subreddit if the bot did not find any comments in its search, and it posted. This was a huge relief because I knew if it could post, it could search. Now that I knew my bot could work, I started over with the precise style, but the same prompt. Bing used a different approach and set up the code to search the first 10 new posts. This meant the code would check the 10 most recent existing posts, so I didn't have to wait for new posts to come in and no more messing around with wonky date ranges. Still no cross posts, so Bing suggested a print statement to let me see what the bot was checking. Brilliant. And that's another pro tip. You should always add print statements so you can see what your code is doing. Comments, which are anything after the hash or pound sign, are also a lifesaver. Bing suggested opening up my search criteria to trigger words and comments by any user, but I knew the original poster of the picture would be the only one able to comment with the real prompt, so I ignored Bing's suggestion here. I switched my code to search hot posts as I figured these more popular upvoted posts had a better chance of having prompts in the comments, but I got an error. With Bing's help and the print statement, I could see it crashed because the code was checking an announcement post made by a moderator. Those posts don't register as having a proper author, so Bing was able to fix that by checking if there was no author and skipping those posts. Once the error was corrected, I got my first real cross post. This is exactly what I wanted. It even commented with the prompt. I asked Bing to suggest more triggers and it did. It also added them to the code without me even asking. I also added that the triggers should be case insensitive, meaning that if somebody capitalizes any of the letters, my bot will still pick them up. This reminds me, don't be afraid to tell Bing to clean up the code. Here I noticed it was repeating my trigger terms in each loop, so I asked Bing to put them all into one set, and it did. In my final code, I settled on imagine, prompt, and the double dash often used in mid-journey prompt codes. And I removed any slashes or colons because although the mid-journey bot uses them in its prompts, sometimes people don't include them when posting their prompts to the mid-journey subreddit. Later, I noticed a post that had the prompt in the text of the post itself rather than in the comments. I wanted to search that text, 
So I plugged the link to that post into Bing and asked it to tell me if it would trigger my code to cross post. Bing could see the post I was referencing, even though it was only made recently, and basically ran my code on it. It told me that my bot would not catch this post. So without me asking, Bing provided the revised code to include the submission self-text in the search for prompt triggers. Then Bing suggested that this change might catch posts without prompts, such as question or discussion posts. So it added the prompt flare as a search criteria for posts. Reddit Flare is a way of tagging your posts with a label that helps categorize it. Question and discussion are flares that are used on posts in the Midjourney subreddit. Stop for a second and think about how wild it is that Bing seemed to get what I was doing so well that it could actually make this suggestion. I was blown away. But then I checked and I found the Midjourney subreddit doesn't have a prompt flare. So I told Bing to remove that from my code. This is a great example of how much AI can do and how it can stumble. I later added a flare check back in for the showcase and painted over edited flare. I also checked to make sure the Midjourney subreddit wouldn't let you post with flare being blank, just in case I needed to check for no flare. Luckily, flare is required, so I didn't have to allow for that in my code. Keep in mind that you're co-authoring the code with Bing, working together to complete your project. You need to have a general understanding of how the code works, so ask questions as you go along. Here I asked Bing why it added a break at the end. Bing gave me the stock answer from the prod documentation that the break statement is used to exit a loop prematurely. But then it said, in this case, I added it to stop the bot from checking more replies to the thank you message after it has deleted the cross post. This is to avoid unnecessary work and potential errors. Explaining why it uses certain statements is fantastic for learning and understanding your code. By the way, this was for code I considered adding to notify the original poster when my bot copied their post and allowing them to potentially delete it. I eventually scrapped it when I found out Reddit automatically sends you a message when your username is mentioned in a comment. Another way this helps is the closer you get on the language, the more precise your prompts. For example, I was calling these posts, but I learned pra calls them submissions. So when talking with Bing, from now on, I started calling them submissions to avoid any confusion. More importantly, this Q&A process helped me debug an issue that plagued my code for days. While trying to prevent duplicate cross posts, the code would check if the cross post existed in my MJ prompts bot subreddit and whether it was cross postable. I questioned Bing about it, but it didn't click for me until I wrote a separate program to check for cross postability and it came up false for all my posts. I finally realized the cross postable test was not only completely unnecessary because it was being run on submissions already in the MJ prompt bot subreddit, but it was also always false. Bing confirmed my view and removed it. I've made a few supplemental programs to help my bot, but I'll go into those in a later video. And remember, unlike a person, Bing won't get annoyed and stop helping you. It even ignores spelling mistakes like here where I typed cod instead of code. It knew I wasn't talking about fish. By this point, I learned so much that I started all over with Bing using a big prompt incorporating everything I learned so far. This was easy because I've been recording my prompts and Bing's responses in a separate Word document. I would say this is another pro tip. Write out your prompts separately like in Word or Notepad before putting them into Bing Chat. This lets you revise your prompts, break them up or combine them, and also reuse them if you hit the 20 prompt limit. But be careful. Somehow doing this caused the double dash trigger in my code to become a single long dash, causing it to miss several prompt comments. You can even see it here before I caught it much later. It took me a long time to find this one, so be vigilant. So now my bot will check new comments as they are made in the Midjourney subreddit instead of checking pre-existing comments. This is how my bot is supposed to work on the cloud, which is my ultimate goal. So I first need to make sure it will work this way on my PC at home. I ran the bot and posted a comment to one of my submissions to the Midjourney subreddit, checked for a cross post to my MJ prompt bot subreddit and success. Now that the comments were being checked properly, I asked Bing to add code to check submission self-text as my old code had. After adding that, I noticed there was a submission with the prompt in the title, so I asked Bing to cover that too. I had some issues and even checked my version of Pro, but couldn't figure out what was wrong. So I told Bing and it rewrote my code to search comments and submissions separately. This is the basis of the actual code my bot uses now, and the split makes things easier to understand when looking at the code itself. Now that the bot was checking comments and submissions separately, I wanted to make sure only comments to submissions with the showcase 
or painted over edited flare were being checked. This was in the submissions check, but I never asked Bing to put in the commas check until just now. Here's another pro tip. Sometimes your code will get too long for Bing's response box and it'll cut off before it gives you everything. If that happens, you can simply tell Bing to just show you the part of the code that's missing. Either just say, give me the last half or give me the piece after and then give some code where it cut off. I noticed that when there was more than one comment in the same submission that triggered my bot, it would cross post each comment to a new submission in my subreddit, making duplicate submissions. I asked Bing to check this in my starting over prompt, but it didn't work. I checked back and saw my prompt was a bit unclear on this point. So I again asked Bing to revise the code so that before it cross posts a comment, it checks the MJ prompt bot subreddit to see if the cross post submission exists. And if it does, it cross posts the comment to that same submission in the MJ prompt bot subreddit, but it didn't work. And Bing suggested checking for existing cross posts manually. I thought it meant for me to check it myself with print statements or something. So instead I tweaked the code by making cross posts singular in one line of code because it looked that way in other lines. I got another error and I told Bing what I did. Bing explained to me that what I did was completely wrong because I made it try to cross post and we're checking if a cross post already exists. Bing reminded me the code that it already suggested is a workaround that checks for existing cross posts manually. It gave me the suggested code again. Finally realizing that it meant the code would manually check for cross posts, I used it. Sure enough, Bing was right. I made three comments to my Sorcerer or Barbarian post in the Midjourney subreddit, and my bot picked them up and cross posted them into the same submission on the MJ prompt bot subreddit. Then I stopped the bot and reran it, added a new comment to my submission, and that fourth comment was also cross posted into the existing post on the MJ prompt bot subreddit. Now my bot was complete. I'll post all the versions of my code to GitHub and put a link in the description below. I've had so much fun making this bot. It's such a great feeling of accomplishment to get it up and running. I hope the video inspires you to try it too. In later videos, I'll cover uploading and running the bot on the Google Cloud for free, getting the bot to log what it's doing and any errors it encounters, and creating maintenance and checking tools for the bot. So like, subscribe, and hit the reminder bell to get notified when I post those videos. And as an added benefit for those of you who have stuck around to the bitter end, here's a crazy hack. At some point, I hit the 20 question limit while still working on my code. I tried to copy and paste it back into Bing via the prompt box, but it was too large. I asked Bing how many characters can fit in the prompt box, and it told me only 2,000 characters. But then Bing volunteered to show me how to expand that to 25,000 characters by altering the HTML of the page. This fascinated me. Why was it allowed to do that? My guess is that Bing Chat does not know that it is interfacing with you through the Bing Chat web page on the Edge browser, but it knows there's such a thing as the Bing Chat web page because people talk about it on the web. Bing is like a brain in a jar that knows what a jar is, but just doesn't know that it's in one. You don't know. No, I don't. I'm not recommending you do this because it might violate the terms of service. I'm just pointing out something interesting I found from Bing Chat. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video.